Welcome to Believer's Talk with Joe and Steve. I'll be your host. My name is Joe. We wanted to get on here and get you updated. Everything happened in Buffalo Bills. If you want to continue to get updated on Buffalo Bills related news, whether it be contract signings, which we'll talk about. Josh Allen signed his contract. We'll break that down. Signings and releases. We've already released two players in training camp. We're one week in. We've already released two players. You want to be right here because we'll keep you updated. Any injury news after training camp preseason right around the corner, guys. Thursday is the Hall of Fame game. Very excited. Um, but then the following week starts the full slate of games. Uh, so through preseason, regular season, we'll keep you updated right here on Believers Talk. So subscribe if you haven't already, like or dislike this uh, video, and leave a comment or two uh, and share it with your friends if you must. But uh, yeah, just constantly come back here for this content. We want to update you on Josh Allen. Previous video, I said that he did just sign his contract. At that time, I didn't have any information about the contract itself, but he did sign his four-year uh, contract. It's four years, about 21, I think it's 21.1 uh 21.183 mil contract so that's signed um when i looked at other well first of all when i looked at the other quarterbacks it kind of fit right you had one and two uh we all saw darnold signed a big contract i think it's 27 mil or 20 mil of that in a signing bonus which is insane um now that is fully guaranteed as most rookie contracts are that's a fully guaranteed contract just like josh allen's is here the four-year 21 mil uh, contract so so yeah so Sam Darnold actually almost got as much of a signing bonus as uh, Josh Allen's full contract and then when you look at uh, Josh Rosen who was drafted 10th I believe his was around the 17 18 million mark um, so it really does fit uh, where he was drafted I went back the past few drafts to see if there was a quarterback drafted in that late um, you know five through nine range and there hasn't been um i went back uh, last year Patrick Mahomes was 10th um and he signed for for around the josh josh uh, rosen numbers so that that's not a surprise there um but other than that most quarterbacks went in the top five or back further so there's really no comparable but when you look at the comparable between uh, the you know people in front of him who got drafted and the people behind him who got drafted it kind of fits into that mold and again with the current cba with current rookie contracts you can't really get too out of line right uh big, basically your biggest negotiation is how much uh you receive due to your signing bonus and things like that now the great thing about josh uh, Allen's contract and I'm not sure if this was done intentionally at the beginning or not or if this is one of the reasons why it took so long to sign him um, we all know the salary cap situation the bills are in this year as far as trouble with the salary cap well this contract is definitely backloaded where he's going to make most of his money the last two years um, two years of his contract so like the first year his base salary is under a million dollars it's like 800 or 480,000 so it's under five hundred thousand dollars uh, 480,000 base salary. Now the signing bonus is equally distributed over those four years. So he gets 3.371 each one of those four years, but the base salary has definitely been lowered to the first year and then increases year by year. So at the, in his fourth year, he's making 3.368 million. So there's definitely a big gap there between 480,000 to the $3.4 million that he's making that final year of his contract. So obviously there was a lot of discussion going back and forth as far as that is concerned. It kind of helps the Bills out this year with their salary cap situation. Will help improve the roster maybe down the line if they do have an injury or something like that. They have a little more cap space to go get somebody else uh, if they need to. So that's the big news about Josh Allen's contract. That's a little bit of a breakdown. If you have any questions about the contract, leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Um, but that's basically what we know uh, up to this point. That's the basics of the contract. Um, going into training camp. Again, week one training camp pretty much in the books now. Uh, the biggest news is that quarterback position, right? Everyone wants to know who's going to be the Bills starting quarterback come week one. Um, we knew in mini camps, Nathan Peterman was stepping up his game a little bit, putting a little pressure on AJ McCarron, or at least that's the news we received. Um, we can say now that, you know, a lot of people think that Nathan Peterman digressed a little bit, uh, and AJ McCarron still looks to be just consistent. Okay, nothing flashy, nothing exciting, but he's consistent. Now, if you want flashy and exciting, look at Josh Allen. 
Okay, Josh Allen has impressed a lot of people in training camp. Uh, he's shown off his arm. He's shown off a little mobility, um, but he's also shown signs of being a rookie, which which happens. He is a rookie, so uh, there have been a few interceptions, some of which, at least one of which I know was not his fault. Um, excuse me a second. Um, one of which was not his fault. Like he had um, thrown the ball up, a jump ball with Kevin Benjamin. Kevin Benjamin deflected it a couple times, got broken up, and then Poyer came and uh, intercepted it. So I don't blame that one on him, but um, there has to be that communication between wide receiver and your quarterback. And in the stat sheet, it's still mad. It still it doesn't matter whose fault it is. It, it's on the quarterback stat sheet. So uh, it kind of looks bad. But at the same time, he, like I said, he has shown flashes. So it looks like it's going back to a uh, battle between McCarron and Allen. Um, so we'll look forward to continuing to watch that. That'll be, that probably be a continuing rotation uh, the way they're rotating now through all of training camp, probably through most of preseason. Uh, I wouldn't expect to hear a starter named until at least the third week of preseason. Again, I, I think the wise decision would be to start AJ McCarron. Although my gut wants us to start Josh Allen and just get him in there. And um, if he's going to be the future of this franchise, we want to find that out as soon as possible. I'm not saying he has to dazzle us right away, um, but you can definitely see signs in a rookie quarterback if they're getting it or not. Last thing I want is to see us put him in week 10-11, see him begin to make progress as we get towards the end of the season, and we keep, you know, we throw him in the next year, and then he digress back to being basically a rookie, and that's basically we're starting over again. Um, and seeing what he can do. Uh, but, you know, if a AJ McCarron deserves a shot too, and so does Nathan Peterman. You know, they, they've they they've been here a couple years now at least. AJ McCarron's been here for a little while uh, behind Andy Dalton, and he hasn't looked bad when he had to come in and start. You know, the one playoff game he lost to Pittsburgh, they should have won that game. Um, but unfortunately, the, the defense and a lot of penalties there kind of kind of let them down in that situation. So, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, again, it looks like it's AJ McCarron is kind of the front runner, I believe, and then Josh Allen and Nathan Peter are behind them. Um, so we'll see what happens there. The the other news that we really want to talk about here is, like I said at the beginning of the video, we've already had two two people added to the roster, and that with two people being added to the roster, you have to release two more so both on that defensive line if you go back to my, my defensive line preview for 2018 we knew that this would be a a position of struggle for the buffalo bills um that defensive line position so we're hoping to see improvement there obviously sean mcdermott and leslie frazier look to see improvement there and uh, they haven't seen it yet so uh, what we did was we dropped uh two guys we dropped both tenny palapoy Okay, who I believe was an undrafted free agent coming in this year. And then we dropped Awa Agazua, uh, who we got from the Giants uh, in the in their offseason. So both those guys have been dropped already. So obviously if you do not if you do not come to play, we you know, training camp doesn't matter. We need to see improvement from day one. And they weren't seeing that out of these two players, so they dropped them. And I'm okay with that. You know, we don't want to see Play like obviously these players are affected by that like that's their family that's their livelihood I understand that and I wish them nothing but the best um, but we're here to improve on what we did last year we're not here to digress okay last year we made the playoffs the Bills first time in 18 years we made the playoffs we're not here to go back to to square one there's no need to okay just because we have a whole new whole new offensive coordinators because we have a whole new quarterback that does not mean all of a sudden we're just digress back to being a you know, six and ten, seven and nine team. We want to make the playoffs every year. That should be Sean McDermott's goal. That should be every Bills player's goal. So, so anyway, we did release them. Uh, we did sign John Hughes, who I talked about a little bit in the last video. Um, we did have him come in for a visit, and then we did end up signing him. Um, he used to be playing for the uh, Cleveland Browns. Now he's with us. And then we also signed Ryan Russell. We had him in for a couple. Um, uh, tryouts to see what he had and we liked them so the bills signed him so uh those are two new guys coming into training camp they were both signed earlier this week so we'll see what they can add to the team maybe add a little more depth to that defensive line position which is much needed right now in buffalo so we'll see what happens there um but that's kind of like the big news as far as signings releases no other signs or releases yet um we still don't know anything about the mccoy situation again um, week one or day one of training camp, it was addressed, and all McCoy says is that he's looking to, he plans on starting week one. 
Brandon Bean said he we're we're training like he's playing start playing start week one until they hear otherwise that's how they're planning to to see it so so that's still up in the air obviously the police are still doing their investigation the NFL is still doing their investigation um, but as of right now that um, that's the situation as I said in the last video we did have Orleans Starkwatt in but no nothing more has come from that um, he tried out with us. Uh, he left without uh, any contract. He didn't release anybody. So obviously we have our 90-man roster currently, um, and we're sticking with that roster. So that's it from the 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 D-line position. Uh, we talked about quarterbacks a little bit. Next thing we want to talk about is uh, Shaq Lawson. Kind of been a big big topic of discussion. Some people think he's, he might be released. He might be on that roster bubble. Um, which is kind of sad to see. Some people, uh, including Mike Rodak, the ESPN reporter for Buffalo Bills, think he might be traded, um, which I don't see us getting much for him at this point. Um, yes, as at this moment, he uh, seems like it's, he's gonna, he might be a bust. Okay, um, and right now they're they're saying that's Trent Murphy's job to lose. So. I still don't know how much depth you want at the defensive end position. Trent Murphy's coming off a pretty serious injury, um, and we want him to be completely healthy. We can't just assume that he's going to come back to his, his 2016 form. We want him to come back, and we want to see what he has, and we don't want to get rid of all our assets at defensive end. And unless we bring someone else in, you know, maybe maybe uh, McDermott and Frazier see someone else out there who, who might give them more uh, on the defensive end, then Shaq Lawson. If that's the case, then go get him, obviously. Um, but we do want to make sure that Trent Murphy is completely healthy before we just get rid of all of our loose ends. Um, you know, I would give the same advice to Eagles fans when it comes to Foles versus Wentz, right? You don't want to get rid of Foles uh, until you know Wentz is healthy. Kind of same situation, obviously a much bigger scale there in Philly. Um, but we do want to make sure that's okay. Other position battles currently going on in training camp, the wide receiver position, right? That has not been made any clearer. Wide receivers keep getting uh, messed around the depth chart, sometimes with the first team, second team, third team. And we even seen uh, Kevin Benjamin playing with the third team offense. So uh, we obviously know that Kevin Benjamin is going to be our number one wide receiver, but he was playing with the third team to maybe see what other t other um, groupings look like as far as wide receivers go. Um, so we don't really know too much. Obviously, Robert Woods is still, uh, still uh, injured. Um, so we don't know any more about his situation. We haven't heard anything else there. Um, but Robert Woods. Zay Jones. Zay Jones is still injured. Robert Woods. Wow, I'm going back a little bit, guys. But yeah, we, Zay Jones is obviously still injured. Um, wish we had Robert Woods right now. But uh, Zay Jones is still hurt. And uh, we'll, we don't know anything more about his situation at the current moment. So we're, we're going day by day as that is concerned. Uh, but we know Jeremy Curley has been moving around a lot. Uh, as far as where he's starting, we do believe that uh, if you watch my wide receiver video, we do I do believe that he will be on the team. Uh, maybe a good slot receiver, and he's had some good seasons. You know, I talk about the season with 49ers. You know, he played really well then. I played, had a couple good early seasons with the Jets, so we'll see what happens as far as uh, combinations that work well. Um, the other position battle really is that offensive line. Everyone thought that that offensive line would be like a complete position battle uh, the whole training camp. But the funny thing is, as far as the first team offensive line goes, four of the five positions have been the same all year, or all training camp so far. So um, there's maybe less questions on the offensive line as we think. The only position that's really been alternating day by day is that center position, which is between um, Ryan Gray and Russell Bodine. They're going back and forth uh, day by day um, with the first team offense. The rest of the line has been uh, has been the same. We have Dawkins at left tackle, which which was predicted, right? I mean, he played a good year last year, but he was really the only solid piece other than Eric Wimmer and Shane Cognito, who are now gone, the solid piece of that offensive line. So we have we have Dawkins at left tackle, we have Ducasi at left guard, uh, we have John Miller at right guard, and we and then we have Mills uh, at right tackle. So those four have been the same throughout training camp. Whether that will change going into week two of training camp, we don't know because they are they are shifting the line on the on the um, the second string uh, offensive line so there's a lot of shifts going on uh, with the second string offensive line but that first string offensive line seems to be in place other than that center position again with uh, Bodine and uh, Bo Bodine with Bodine and Groy both uh, fighting for that position so 
So we'll see what happens there. Um, but that will, I think that, again, that center position will be a position battle through preseason at least. Um, but you do want to get that cemented, especially it's really tough when you have the center and the quarterback both uh, question marks, right? Because you want to make sure that that, that exchange is good. So what, as soon as McDermott uh, picks his starting center, the better. The sooner McDermott picks his starting quarterback, the better. Um, but if, if Groy and Bodine are alternating with the first string on a daily basis, and the quarterbacks are constantly changing, then they're 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 seeing both, but you just want that consistency. Um, you know, a lot of, a lot of fans out there might not realize that there is there is a cons a pattern that you want to get into between your center and quarterback exchange. We see it a lot, even with the with the veterans, we see uh, f football exchanges between quarterback and center that aren't always clean, and how that affects a play. You know, you see offensive linemen stepping on the quarterback's toe as he's going back to drop back and then that slows up a play sometimes leads to a sack sometimes leads to a fumble we want to make sure that that's all as much as we can as co well as much as they can as a coaching staff we want to make sure that that's up to stuff you know and we want to make sure that everyone is comfortable in their position so so that those are the three key battles i think currently going on in training camp you got that quarterback position we're not sure about wide receiver position that you know the two three slots and probably the four or five slots too, we're not sure about. And then you have the center position uh, between Bodine and Groy uh, that will constantly, I believe, be a uh, fight throughout training camp. Hopefully by preseason, we come up with some sort of uh, way we want to go about looking at them, maybe play half first half. I don't know, um, but that's not my job, luckily. I'm just here to give you all the updates uh, from the Buffalo Bills training camp. Uh, any injury news notes um, not that I know of I know O'Leary yeah uh, O'Leary did go down with a little bit of an ankle injury he's had some some injury issues to start training camp nothing too serious from what I understand um, but that's something to kind of keep an eye on because um, in, in our tight end episode we did I did talk about um, how I really like our tight end position and so I like the depth there so I want to see Nick O'Leary be healthy uh, going into preseason to see what he has because we obviously know Charles Clay is going to be our starter uh, but as far as what's behind him, we might sure we're set there. So other than that, not too much going on. Um, so we just wanted to get on here, update you on a, a few things. Josh Allen's contract, the releasings and signings on our defensive line. And then we have the three key battles currently going on in training camp. So very exciting stuff. We're getting ready, guys. Like I said at the beginning of the video, the first preseason game is this Thursday, the Hall of Fame game. Then we have the Hall of Fame ceremony on Saturday. We're looking forward to that. And then the following week, it's that full slate of preseason games. So we will be on here to constantly update you on all things Bills related, get into week two of training camp. So uh, as we lo learn information, we'll bring it to you. Um, so if you have not already, like I said, subscribe to this channel. If there's something on here you think I misspoke about or something on here you want to challenge, we can talk back and forth. Please leave a comment, share this video, like it, dislike it, uh, but just remember to subscribe. And we are on Facebook and Twitter as well. So like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, do all that kind of stuff. Again, like I say, the social media stuff's kind of getting out of, out of control. Um, but uh, just follow us and we'll keep you updated as best we can. So uh, that's all I have. So till next time, go Bills.